Welcome Yorkshire Classic Cars Limited fans. Uh, welcome to another really, really sunny day in sunny Redford. Um, I know you all love a stag. There is the white stag hooded up. Uh, and today I'm going to start the diff change. Now you should be looking up at the differential as you can see. It doesn't look a mess because obviously it was painted when it was all put in there. Uh, it, it's, uh, I took it out yesterday. It is really whining. So I've bought a new diff. Exchange diff, rebuilt diff from a popular set of people who do triumph parts just up the road in Lincoln. May or may not want the name in this, and they aren't sponsoring it. So, you know. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is guide you through it, show you what I'm doing, show you how I change a diff on a stag, starting from the beginning. As you can see there, I just uh, dropped that drive shaft off. Uh, two 916 spanners. These are 3 UNF, uh, and they should have nylock nuts on the inside. The difficult one to get out is the one where the grease nipple is up at the top there. Um, I'm just going to drop those both down as low as I can get them like that. Hopefully the, uh, the diff should come past them. If not, I'll wire them up above like that so they're out of the way. Just put a tie wrap around the exhaust or something to hold it out of the way. Um, that's the easier one of the two. I usually start on the hardest one, but uh, on today's occasion, I decided to do that one first. You've just seen me whip the, uh, the prop shaft off there. Four 916s head, uh, 3 h UNF bolts. Um, I haven't marked it today. I us we usually mark them and put them back to the same place, but I'm putting a new differential on, so that's unnecessary. I have just noticed here, there's a little bit of a divot there that maybe I missed the last time I was here, so I'm going to take that off before it goes back, make sure it sits nice and flush. There's no vibration or anything, so I don't think there's any issue, but I'll just, uh, I'll just sand or file that off before it goes back together with the new differential. Uh, I'm hoping to pull the diff out without dropping all the back suspension right down. I'm hoping to let these swing low and hopefully not take the gear uh, exhausts out, uh, handbrake cables and things like that. I can't remember how I did this last time. It's been that long since I took one out. I'm hoping, having put the ramp arms under here, that I can let these beams swing down a bit under the spring pressure, and that should push it down far enough for me to hook the quill shaft over the top. I may may um, let the differential come off the quill shaft first, but I do want the quill shaft off because I've got a replacement bearing to put in there. Again, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. There's no play in it whatsoever, but you know, while you're in here, you may as well do it. Better to be safe than sorry for the price of a bearing. It wasn't very expensive. Okie dokie. So, <clears throat> excuse me, having uh, removed both drive shafts and the prop shaft, uh, this one's dropped down here, as you can see. This one, I'm going to tie wrap that up to that part of the exhaust system where I was. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this section of the exhaust off. Um, realistically, there is no way the diff is coming past that. When you see the brackets up there, I'm pointing, so they need to come down. That is all part. It's all very dark up there. Sorry about that. Um, it's obviously been painted black, but that's all um, part of that big bracket. And, undoing that away from the car is difficult. So what I'm going to do is whip that exhaust system off uh, with my little baby ugga dugga gun and a half inch socket. They're all, these are actually metric usually, they're M8, so they are actually 13 millimeters. Obviously on a stag you also have to take these sections off here. These are the hangers uh, because they're attached to the clamp part behind there there's a clamp with another clamp behind it it's a very weird rig up and i will give you a bit of advice there 
if you are restoring your own stag or if you're having stag work done and it necessitates the move, take this beam and put it on that side and that beam and put it on this side. That then in effect flips those brackets around here um, and you can put the hanger here and the clamp there and that makes it significantly easier. I did that in error on the yellow stag um, and I thought, oh gosh, I'm going to have to turn those around, switch them the other way. I'll give it a go, see if it works or not. It makes life so, so much easier. So there's a little bit of advice for you on that. So yeah, there's a little bracket here, uh, a clamp here. Uh, now I assembled this exhaust, uh, it's assembled dry and I don't over tighten these. So if you over tighten them, you get like an olive effect in the pipe. Uh, that shouldn't be there because I didn't do it. So I'll let you watch me do that. Uh, there may be some swearing, I'll edit that out. You should be able to see there. Uh, that section of the exhaust system is now off. A bit of wiggly wobbly in to get it through there. But that now gives me significantly better access to the differential. And that should allow me to drop it down. Um, gives me a little room back here. Uh, not a lot. I mean, it goes across here. However, it does allow it to drop down a little better. So that should make life significantly easier. So obviously everything's coming apart quite nicely because when I built this, um, I knew what I was doing <laughs> and it wasn't very long ago to be fair so you know these things haven't been removed since you also notice another little tip there I put a washer under the nut on the uh, on the exhaust clamps there that allows you to tighten them up a little bit easier without it deflecting and destroying the clamps as you can see they're in mild steel and they're not particularly good um, so yeah next step get the bolts out get the transmission jack under it I'm going to try and split it from the quill shaft first I think I'll change the quill shaft bearing if that's possible. Um, I've never actually done one before. I may just check it for play because it really does feel like it's not worth touching. So I don't know. I'll, I'll have a look at that and debate that myself. Okay, okay. Right, so further to that, um, what we'll show you is up there, you can see that it's all polybushed. This is the mounting of the rear of the differential um, stainless steel washers I put in here. Um, 916 say F. 3H UNF uh, big studs that come out the frame up here into that cross member. But if you can see that very clearly, it's not an easy place to position you. That ties it into that massive bracket that goes across the back of the diff. Very strong rig up on here. Then the front is this section here of what, six mil, quarter mil thick, quarter inch thick, sorry, not quarter mil. <laughs> um, the quill shaft is bolted on here and here. So these bolts go through these two cross members. Uh, the quill shaft itself is bolted on these four in a diamond shape, 3 8 UNFs, um, which are uh, 916 heads again. So that's what I'm going to take off now and see if I can allow the diff to come down. Once I've got these nuts off, I can take the uh, bushings out, the uh, poly bushings there, and that should allow the diff to come back over those studs at least a good inch, I would suggest, which is probably more than it needs to come off that quill shaft anyway. So um, let's give it that go now and see how we get on. If you saw the end of that video, I may have faux pad slightly there and didn't expect it to go quite as quickly as it did. <laughs> um, once I'd stuck and I was going to put, put the transmission jack under it and figured that it probably didn't need it. And it, yeah, it really went. So it flicked it down. Obviously, it can't go all the way down because it's attached to these and these can only move on the bushings at the end. Um, but yeah, <laughs> made me jump a little bit and uh, I may need to burn my underwear when I get home. So yeah, I'm going to, uh, next I'm going to whip these off uh, and then I'm going to take off the quill shaft uh, bolts and I'm going to slide that diff out of there. Lovely.
ladies and gents, shown significantly quicker than it actually is, is that to get the diff out, but leave the quill shaft in. Now then, I'm going to check that for play. Uh, I'll do that off camera. Um, if, it, if there is any significant play or graunchiness in the bearing or anything like that, you wouldn't be able to see it on the film anyway. I'm only going to turn it and lift it. It's no use rocking it. There will always be play in if you rock it up and down like that. Uh, by the way, ball bearings work, but it, what you're lift, checking for is actual physical lift up and down or notchiness. If there is, I'll change that, and then I'll come back to you when I change the, the uh, put the other diff back in. Now, there's the diff. I've left it on the um, transmission jack. Please be careful, even if you use the transmission jack, these are really big, bulky, heavy differentials. Now, there's my hand. It, it, it's, it's big. It weighs about sort of 20 kilos, um, and it's a bit like a bag of cement. It's really awkward to lift because it's an oddball shape and all the weights, not where you expect it. Um, it's sat there now. I don't know if you, you could see at the end of the last video, but fling itself off there. Um, I am draining the oil out. There was oil in it. Um, to keep it alive in there. So that, you know, it's not oil starving bearings. It's probably 15 years worth of use. Um, although those bolt nuts, it's been rebuilt in the past. In time, they don't look original. Um, however, that's um, it. Doesn't ruin a, a diff like that. So I'm just going to drain all the oil out of. It. I don't want it to make. It. Inevitably, the, uh, it was in the wrong place when it. But that's gone exceptionally well. So I'll clean that up, check, check the uh, damage. Um, need it. It's here. It's not a particularly huge bearing. Uh, I bought, obviously, if I don't need it, I'll see it. I'll my customer it in. Um, I figured it was worth bringing it. Buy when you don't, so... Um, is line number six hundred three. So I will uh, I will get back to that in a second. But yeah, please do that. Okay, so here's the diff. Uh, as you can see, it comes shrink wrapped. This is a three forty five diff, so it's out of an automatic stag originally, or it would have been for an automatic stag. So it's slightly higher gear ratio, which is what the customer was after. Uh, he knew the diff was worn anyway. So if we open it up now. obviously refurbished completely refurbished you can get one without a new uh, crown wheel and pinion um, which obviously just redo the bearings uh, I, that seemed a little bit risky to me to change it and not put that in so I opted for the one with the new crown wheel and pinion obviously it's a tiny bit more expensive but then if you've got to do all this again as it turns out the crown wheel and pinion was on its last legs but they didn't rebuild it then that's going to be annoying um, you can see the gaskets in there. It's got the studs in at the rear for the um, for the uh, back plate mount there. One's got a nut on it for some weird reason. I'll zoom you across to that a little bit. So yeah, you've got the uh, the output shafts are in. I did ring them and ask if the the output shafts came with it. It feels lovely and tight. I have to say. Um, these are the studs for the back plate, that plate that goes on the back plate, okay. Um, this has been painted silver. I normally leave those bare metal if I'm really honest because they are aluminium but sell a bit. Um, obviously the quill shaft doesn't come with it. There is a new o-ring in here to seal the quill shaft. Um, I'll just put a smear of fresh engine oil on there before I put the two together. Uh, the splines are all in top condition there. That don't really wear a lot anyway usually. Just check the breather is free. Because if your breather isn't free, then it's going to get to pressure in there as the oil expands and it's thrown around. Um, and that's going to then pump the oil out, make it leak everywhere. Uh, but yeah, all seems lovely, tip top. Lovely and smooth, no lift in the bearings, obviously. Just checking it before I put it in. I'd much rather not fit it and then find out it's not as good as the, it's supposed to be. So yeah, um, over here, inevitably, the uh, diff fell off the transmission jack. Uh, I knocked it, it fell off, so I've spent uh, about 15 minutes cleaning up the world's largest puddle of uh, EP8090. Um, 
But now we're all ready to fit this back in. So I'll set you up and I'll get her on the jack and we'll get her in. I'll do this in real time for you a little bit. I'll clean the, just cleaning with a fresh rag the end of the quill shaft, just making sure it looks in good condition, which it does. No divots, sharp pieces, grit, muck, filth in it. I've checked it for lift, feels lovely actually. Um, I changed this quill shaft when this car was first rebuilt, the rear axle was bent on it. And this quill shaft had loads and loads of play in it, so I bought this one and put it on. So I was pretty sure it was in good condition. Now, just checking if there's a king spline in there. If you don't know what a king spline is, look it up, but it's uh, basically it's a fatter spline or a wider spline to make sure that locates in the right position. It doesn't have one. So again, although this is reconditioned, I'm going to give that a little smear and just make sure it's clean and there's no debris on it, anything like that. Uh, although you want it as clean as possible, you, it's not like building an engine. So if you do get a tiny, tiny, weeny bit of, uh, of uh, detritus in there, it's not going to provide the same amount of damage as uh, it would in an engine. Uh, it's not got oil ways, it's not got an oil pump, things like that aren't in here. So, pop her on the transmission jack. Again, it's not that heavy, it's just awkward. Um, I tend to try and keep my hand on the part that I'm jacking up, because as you can see, it intends on slipping out. There is no easy position for it. The weight's all in the wrong place. Now, obviously this is empty of oil. Normally I would crack the filler plug out the side before I put it in, just to make sure it's going to come out. But I can see it's a brand new one, so there shouldn't be any problem with that. It's feel very tight actually, this stuff. Move her in a little bit. Will slowest transmission jack. Of all the times I should have montaged it. There you go. However, such is life. Never forget the internet is full of people doing jobs that look significantly easier because they've been well edited. <laughs> a lot of these jobs are a lot harder than they look. And that refers to anything you watch. So just get that in position now. Give my hand on it because obviously I don't want to drop the blooming thing. It's cast iron, but it will still break if it drops. Start the lead in there, the nose. Now, when I start to position this, the transmission jack won't be high enough. I just want it to take the weight off, and she's in. Just like that. I'm going to leave the trans jack there now. I've got the quill shaft screws. Give them a wipe with my rag. Start one in. Obviously, I'm not going to tighten that. But I do want one in there, just stop it riding away. So, you know what? Put that in there. Make sure the threads have started. Don't want it cross-threaded. Just going to run that in two or three threads, just so that if the worst should happen and it starts to run away, it can't fall out. Don't need to run it up. Don't want to run it up. Just want that is just a safety stop, basically, so that I can stop worrying about this falling off the trans jack. The trans jack is just there taking the weight now. Always tighten things gradually. Never run that screw up and then try to run the others in. If there's any misalignment, you won't be able to, and then you'll end up having to take it out again. So start all four screws in. That now I'm convinced has gone in about 
30 mil, half an inch. So that's now holding the weight of that. I could actually take the trans jack out if I want to, but there's really no sense in that one iota. So I'm going to run those up now, um, put the back stand on, put the back plate on, put it back into position. I will have to lower the car down on the jacks a little bit, put the, uh, put the drive shafts back in. I'll give those a good greasing while it's part uh, and then tighten everything up. Lovely. So what you just saw me montage there was the quill shaft is now in and tight. Those are FT. Obviously, it's impossible to uh, to tart those in. Um, you just have to do them tight, and that is that. Uh, these are less tight. I noticed I didn't use things like an Ugadug gun on this. This is an aluminium casing, um, and these are only 3 8 so I don't want to go too wild on them. Uh, a little bit of copper slip on there, just better safe than sorry. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is push that. Put the uh, drive shafts on whilst she's hung down like that. It's going to make life a lot easier. Um, I'm keeping a vestigial eye on my car because it's outside and I don't want it to rain on it. Uh, <laughs> um, the weather is supposed to be coming clement in the next hour, but it all sounds a little bit like it's starting to rain outside. So I'm going to bob the uh, stop you there and push the capri in, uh, put the drive shafts on, and then raise that back into position. I have some uh, polybush. Uh, lubricant that will push on those polybush grease just before they go back in. I tighten up the drive shaft. Um, I can't do the diff yet. Don't want to do the diff yet. These three are just easy to get. So I've done these three. There is one at the top on each side. Although, on on sorry, I've done all four on that side. There's one here, right at the very top. Because the diff's hung down, it's tension the handbrake, so I can't turn the wheels very easily. So that won't go. Um, I've got some Super Pro. Uh, this is the original Polybush grease that comes with the bush kit. So just to be on the safe side, I'm just going to put a smear of that on there. Just stops any creaking and groaning. I hate the stuff. Um, it works incredibly well. There's nothing wrong with the product. It's just, it sticks to your fingers and makes a horrible mess. So I'm going to put that on with some gloves like that. Uh, what I'll do is whilst I'm waiting, I'll, uh, I'll do the other side of the bush as well. Well, I've got the gloves on. That's the side with the concave dish in it um, that fits underneath like that. I won't do the bottom so I can stand them there on my trusty workmate that you are positioned on currently. And then what I'll do with that, excuse me a sec, phone ringing. Sorry about that, phone rang. Uh, so what I've done there is do the underside of the washers um, and the top side of the the top side of the bushing so that when I touch it, I don't get it all over me all of my hands. It's horrible stuff. It, it works really well, but it's it's really sticky. So what I'm gonna do now, the upper bushings are still in place. Hopefully, I may just drop the car down a tiny bit. It's annoying because you end up banging your head on it constantly. Just to make sure that my transmission jack has got enough lift on it, enough altitude. Okay. Just check you can see what's going on there. Hopefully you can see. 
Let me uh, zoom you out a little. Right, so if I put the cage back on the jack and then very carefully lift the diff back up. Again, transmission jack, slowest device in the world. Apologise about that. I missed the call, by the way. If it's important, they'll leave a message, I'm sure. I'll give them a buzz back later. So now I'm going to go up with this. I don't want to go too far because I don't want to lift the car off the ramp. But you can see that going up into place. These bolts on the back here, by the way, would normally have lock tabs on, but I've put split locking washers on. Um, it works just as well. Don't particularly want nylocks on there purely because if it rusts at all, it, uh, it's a pain to get them back off again. So we're going up just gently. I'm, uh, I'm always keeping it in mind that I am actually under the car, which I'm now lifting up. Uh, and I don't want to do that particularly because this transmission jack isn't uh, designed for that sort of weight loading. So taking my big spacer washers, my big spacer washers here, and some fresh nylon nuts. So hopefully I've pushed that into place. Start the nut on there. Now I appreciate if you're watching this and you have your own stag, chances are you don't have access to a ramp and therefore obviously a transmission jack is as much use as a chocolate fire guard. But if you do have a ramp, or if you are working on a ramp, or if you do this for a living, um, it does make life significantly easier. These are expensive. If you have a ramp in your garage, I think last time I looked at one, they were right about 70, 80 quid. What's that? Well, that'd be about $90, I guess. I can't remember what the exchange rate is at the minute. Um, I know we're quite close. So that's those two back up in there. The handbrake's now gone loose again. Brakes are absolutely fab on this car. I've um, drained and re led the brake system. And I've got to say, it was well worth the effort. The brakes are absolutely dynamite, but they always are very, very good on stags. So obviously I don't want to let the weight of the car on those. I'm just going to run these up now gently. You've got to remember when you wind them on like that, you only get as far as the nylon if you're lucky. You've got to be careful not to shear these as well. They stick out of the bodywork a lot. So you don't have to go angry tight with them. I go tight, I don't go FT tight. They are actually a very, very nice differential to put into place. Everything works quite well on there. Like that. And then what I can do now, because the handbrake has come back off again, because the tension isn't on the cable, I will go around each of these. There's, now, there's one bolt here. You may know. Let me see if you can see that. Probably not. There's one bolt here that I've now rotated to the bottom. I need to tighten that up, that one bolt that goes through the drive shaft. Once that's tightened up, I'll then go through and re-tighten all those all the way around to make sure they are super tight. Reattach the prop shaft. Refit the exhaust pipe. Now, before I fit the exhaust pipe, I may put the oil in the diff, just purely because it makes access a little bit easier. Uh, and I'm going to take that out. The diff is now held up. Transmission jack can now go. It gets used a lot when I'm welding that. So it's, uh, it's not the smoothest transmission jack in the world. But yeah, so there the diff is in place. The nuts are in. Bushings back in, the Super Pro poly bushes. So they haven't taken any damage at all. They do last an awful lot longer. I do heartily recommend these. I used to use them at Yorkshire Triumphs uh, and I'm a dealer for them. Well, I'm not a dealer. I'm a, I'm a, I, I have an account with them so I can get those. Um, easily and they they fit very well and they retain the elasticity of the original rubber they're a little bit tarter but they're not i have bought poly bushes before off ebay and all places like that and they come in the like concrete the shape you fill in out if you've got any um and these are these retain the, the tighten the car up but they don't they don't make it horrible so yeah there's that last bolt i just need to run that one up these are all run up go around them one at a time just make sure they're all nice and tight um 
again, I can't get an ugga dugger gun in here, I can't get a ratchet in here, you can only get an open ender spanner on there or a very tight um, ring spanner. I use in there, I have an old brittle spanner, obviously, because I'm working on British cars. Um, and that gets in there quite nicely, actually, because it's quite thin around the head. Don't know who makes these now. It's not, uh, it's not brittle, obviously. Right, so I'll whip those up and tighten them up. I'll apologise in, in front of the sound quality again. The microphone has gone by the wayside for a moment because I knocked my phone over and, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, however, I'm charging it up and hoping it'll still work. I have just gone over those. There was a couple of little indentations on there um, where somebody had clearly used a chisel or something at some time and it had a little dint on it. So I've just gone around the edges with the uh, flat wheel. Sorry. Uh, the flat wheel and just clean those off so it's nice and flat again. Obviously, I'm not trying to dig into it. I've just, just taken any raised areas off and it's nice and smooth now. Obviously, the diff flange is uh, as clean as it was before I've given it a wipe. I'm just going to bob the bolts back in. I'll montage you on that one. Um, that's going back on now and then just the exhaust pipe and then she's done. Okie dokie, so should, we should have the exhaust pack on there. It's nice and square and level. Um, I have a particular detest for any exhaust system that sits on the carry grant as, a, as it's all leaned over. It absolutely drives me insane. I've fitted exhaust before and had to bend the tailpipes to make sure they're level. It's part of being a little bit OCD about stuff. Um, if I just close you in there on the exhaust mountings now, so these are an absolute... If anybody's watching my video till this far along, that one there is made out of half a Capri donut. Um, so is that one there. They work just as well as uh, stag ones. They're a little bit loose, but there's never been any problem. Um, and I will say you cannot get good quality stag exhaust mount rubbers. That one that's in there is an original one that came with a car. And I remember back in York's trying, so I remember this many, many moons ago, and I'm going to go off on a bit of a rant here, so you can listen or not listen, fast forward it by all means. Um, and a guy moaned a bucket full because we haven't changed the exhaust rubbers on his exhaust uh, for new ones. Now, I assume Pete explained to him, but the fact is, if you buy new ones, they will literally split the minute you try and attach them to the exhaust. Absolutely terrible. I don't know what the make out of rubber just doesn't seem to be the same anymore. I uh, don't know if it's an environmental thing, don't know if it's, I, don't, I have no idea. The fact is, it's like a polymer and it doesn't have any give in it and it splits and breaks. So, those are, that is an original cleaned up stag rubber. And if you saw during the video, I had it stretched about four inch across. It's gone back on, it's still in one piece and it always will be. Um, these ones back here, those use, uh, I think they're Super Pro mountings in there. They might be rubber, I'm not sure. I just need to put the clamp back on there, by the way. Now that's it, the clamp on here and the clamp on here, and the whole job is done. Um, it's not a particularly difficult job to do the uh, diff on a stag. It is, I appreciate, significantly easier if you've got a ramp and you can stand up, although I will say my arms now feel like they're made out of lead. Um, I'm debating an early finish Friday. It's, you know, it's only 5.30, so I might actually go home. Um, just the bumper to change on this now. The actually the bumper is all good. It's just this corner here that's got some rust on it. Uh, you can't see it underneath. It's fine underneath. Um, I'll just bolt the exhaust up. I may start on the bumper today. I may not. Um, but yeah, all good. Filled with oil, ready for a road test. Thanks for watching. If you're still with me, please like, subscribe, comment. If you need any work doing, give us a shout. 
I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm on, I have a website, obviously. Uh, thanks for watching. Cheers and good night.